Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And I'll start with just a couple of announcements. Remember that our cancer boot camp is coming up the 16th and 17th of July. It's a Friday night and Saturday afternoon. So it's two sessions. We just divide it up. So it's not such a long five, six hour thing. So, um, but anyway, uh, we're going to talk about causes of cancer. Uh, strategies that cancer patients use to survive, how to evaluate conventional and alternative treatments, and the role of diet and lifestyle change in surviving and thriving as a cancer patient. Um, so detailed slides will be provided. There will be questions and answers. It's $69 for members and $99 for non-members. And um, I'm only gonna do it probably one time this year, but it's a course that I think is very helpful in terms of an overview. Cancer patients, families, everybody welcome, all right? Um, the other thing is we're gonna have the new Curious About COVID available after the 4th of July, a different, um, we're gonna spruce it up a little bit with some new information that we think is really important for you to know about. And uh, so those of you who've already participated in, uh, participated in one of those, you're welcome to um, participate again. And then for members, we have Lose the COVID-25. We do that once a month and health lessons from COVID. Things like what should you really be concerned about? How do you really keep yourself healthy? What really happens when you get the flu and things of that nature. So um, lots going on here. Our calendar is chock full. I mean, seven days a week, we're doing stuff here. So go to uh, www.wellnessfarmhealth.com and take a look. You can email me at pampopper at msn.com. We're training a lot of people, by the way, to be in our business because our business, I think, is the future of healthcare. So um, you can email me about that as well. So uh, last week, I talked a lot about this um, American Rescue Plan Act, which has some provisions in it for schools. And um, I wanted to give you some more information about that and then give you some more details on what we're doing around this. Um, the one thing I want to make sure that we're clear on is that um, there are several different areas in which this money is being used. So you need to check into your local school system because I did find one school system here in Columbus that's using all the money to um, help with uh, children who got behind during the, um, the school shutdowns and when there were hybrids or you know remote learning and all that sort of thing. So um, some schools are spending their money very, very wisely on, um, on, on those kinds of things. Some are spending money on mental health. Um, in addition to that, mental health uh, for children, because we really do have, this is an area in which we have a lot of problems right now. Um, I remember last year when uh, Robert Redfield testified in front of Congress, he was at the time the head of the Centers for Disease Control. And he said that 25% of kids last year had thought about committing suicide, children and adolescents. And unfortunately, a lot of them uh, succeeded in it. But um, I read to you uh, some guidelines from one school system. I decided to look up my own school system and see here in the city I live in, which is Worthington, Ohio, what they have in mind. And um, they are going to use some of the money to uh, deal with kids who got behind and all that sort of thing. As it pertains to uh, mitigation strategies, I'll just tell you what the school system has in mind. Physical distancing, um, will be recommended but not required. Hand washing will be emphasized throughout the school day. Hand sanitizers will be placed throughout the buildings and students will be encouraged to sanitize their hands when entering and again when leaving the classroom. Um, district cleaning protocols will return to pre-COVID uh, routines. Uh, contact tracing will occur based on Columbus Public Health guidance for all highly infectious diseases. District nurses have all been trained in this process. Diagnostic and screening testing, Worthington, Worthington City Schools will continue to have testing and screening supplies at nursing clinics in the schools. The districts will strategically utilize test kits for COVID concerns in order to keep uh, students safely in school as much as possible. Vaccinations, the district will continue to encourage faculty, staff, and students to be vaccinated. The district is willing to serve as a host site as vaccinations are available. Um, so and mask wearing is recommended, but not required. So the reason I think that these uh, guidelines are really important to look at, this is what the school has, what our school system here has determined is necessary to keep our children safe. So I found that a lot of parents are very focused on the mask issue and, and they, I understand that, but there's a lot more to what the school is gonna do. So I think you should look that up. 
And then I'll tell you what we're going to do. I think that a lot of parents um, need to know things like risk factors for their kids and things of that nature, the mental health aspect of how children have suffered through this whole uh, last 16 months. Um, alternatives, we don't really have a point of view on what parents should do in terms of education, but we do have a lot of very experienced people who are willing to help. Um, if you decide that you wanna do something different with your children, at least for the time being, so um, we will be launching this program. I know a lot of you are inquiring about it. Please feel free to send me an email at campopper at msn.com. We're gonna be launching a program after the 4th of July and um, we're looking for teachers, substitute teachers, retired teachers, people who are experts in fields ranging from finance to cooking to um, to crafts, to art, to everything, because um, that some of those resources might be helpful. And we're going to help school parents gather together in local communities so that they can support one another with whatever they feel is necessary to do to get their children educated properly and, um, and also safely, all right? And I think you know what I mean by that. Uh, so um, more on this in a couple weeks or next week. I, I lose track of which day is which day, but um, next week we'll have more information and we'll be scheduling a lot of informational sessions that you're all welcome to participate in. We're really looking forward to, um, you know, I've heard about grassroots all my life, but grassroots really to me is when a lot of people in a community get together one uh, one on one or 25 at a time or 100 at a time who live near each other and can support each other. So I think in-person local involvement is really, really important. And that's what is going to be required to make sure that our children are educated well and taken care of safely. And I think you know what I mean by those things. So. Um, as usual, pass this on to anybody who you think will enjoy watching it. And I will be back to you tomorrow with more news. Um, a lot of information about this type of thing is in writing with references in our weekly newsletter, which goes out on Monday. And if you're not a subscriber yet, feel free to send me an email and we'll add you to that list. All right, I'll be back to you tomorrow to talk about some other things. Um, thanks for watching.